Ohio basketball has a rich tradition. Conference championships, tournament titles, postseason appearances, and the best fans in the MAC in the best arena in the MAC with the banners hanging down. Great players, great coaches. A new era for Bobcat men's basketball is about to start. It's time for Saul Ball. Saul Phillips is the new head coach at Ohio University, and he joins us now inside the ready room at the Convocation Center. First off, coach, congratulations. Welcome to Athens. It's great to be here. I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. I have never worked with a, with a radio guy, the voice, that is so jacked. You're freaking me out a little bit. Well, I try to do the best that I can I, every I'm just part saying of my you're, life. you're making me look bad, so knock it off. Well, okay. Um, we'll try to work on that as we move forward okay. as well there, but hopefully this will be comfortable for you. But let, let's talk about it, the timing of everything. You're from Reedsburg, Wisconsin. You went to Wisconsin, Platteville, uh, then off to uh, multiple assistant coaching spots, uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and then you were the ops man at Wisconsin. Then tremendous years at North Dakota State. 2009, I remember watching that game. And I remember the Bison are going to knock off Kansas. You came so close there. You had more fans than Kansas did at the Metrodome as well. And then this year, of course, you beat Boomer Sooner. Oklahoma lost to San Diego State in the round of 32. So from a timing standpoint, why now for you, your three children, and your wife to come to the Hocking Hills? Well, uh, the biggest reason for me is this opportunity. I mean, this is a terrific but the timing of it works out perfect as well I mean you take a terrific university something that's very appealing is a job then you combine that with the fact that I've got a daughter that's 10 years old we can still move our family without and I've got an eight-year-old son a, a three-year-old so we got a, a family that is still okay to move there's not all the drama that goes with it if I do mm -hmm. it in a couple of years so I get a job that I can settle down in and be a part of for for 10 plus years and that's really what I'm looking for I uh, I, I look around here and I see home. That, that's what I see. And I want it to be that way for, for until for sure my daughter graduates high school. We, we just uh, saw her there. She said that she's 10 years old and she said she has a couple of years and so hopefully there's, there's many more years past her graduating as well. Let's talk about uh, the backstory. And obviously you're not here if you don't have a tremendous run at North Dakota State, and, and NDSU and, and Bison Nation most certainly make you who you are. Um, this all, always is a bittersweet time, most certainly you look forward, uh, but obviously this is the time to thank them for, for what they did for you as well. No question about it. I, I left a group of guys uh, back up in Fargo and, in a, and an athletic director and a school president. I mean, who tells your school president they're leaving and the president has one question? What can I do for you? How about it? I mean, that, that's yeah. pretty special. My athletic director, the night after I signed the contract, uh, we sat around till 3 in the morning together, reminiscing about the good things. I, again, it's not supposed to work that way in college athletics. I told my guys I was leaving, and they told me congratulations, and you earned it. Uh, then they said we'd race to the NCAA tournament. I hope we do. Uh -huh. I hope they have all kinds of success. I hope they have en enough success up there to forget about who Saul Phillips was, and I hope we have all kinds of success here, too. Let's talk about emotions, too. I, we, we all know you're a tremendous head coach, and you've done some great things. And um, Some head coaches hide emotions when it comes to uh, the highs or, or lows. I think some of the great images of this NCAA tournament were you raising the, the bison horns up to your fans in front of your section after you knocked off Oklahoma? And then, obviously, the other side of that, the emotions that you were brought to tears in the press conference after the loss uh, to the Aztecs in, in Spokane. Talk about what that does for you. Talk about why you make all of that public for people uh, to see about Saul Phillips. Because I can't help it. I mean, <laughs> if I could control it, I would. I, I don't know. I, I'm, very, I'm very passionate about what I do. I'm very passionate about the young men. Uh, in my program, and uh, you know, it's funny because on a day-to-day -day basis, I, there's not a lot of ups and downs. It's kind mm -hmm. of the same all day long. I'm happy. That's it. But you get into very emotional moments where you've got, uh, well, where you're achieving a life's goal, or when you're saying goodbye to a group of guys that just help you achieve that life's goal. Uh, that's when you're going to see it come out a little bit more. I, although I'm not exactly bashful. Uh, but in terms of the extreme cases, you know, it was an extremely emotional weekend for me. And I do care about my players that much. And you know what? They, if those cameras wouldn't have been in front of me, I still would have had that moment at some mm -hmm. point. 
just so happened I did it on national TV. The good news is I got a free round of golf out of Charles Barkley from it, so that's a, that's, that's a plus. <laughs> yeah, you could YouTube that. It was, it was really a classic moment of the tournament. Um, when we talk about influences, uh, you're from Wisconsin, so during the time that, that you were uh, growing up and then uh, moving into college, Dick Bennett most certainly probably has some influences for you and, and his teams at Wisconsin Green Bay and then, of course, at Wisconsin. Bo Ryan, of course, so successful. You mentioned Greg McDermott and Tim Miles. I think it's interesting about Tim Miles because we all know that he's so avid on Twitter and you don't do Twitter. That's one of the uh, one of the influences you didn't get from him. He, he almost lured me into a Twitter battle right, <laughs> at, the, right at the beginning. I, I got into it and I decided that I liked my job too much to go any further down that road. I, I don't have enough self-censorship to Twitter. I, I uh, use an all of it that I can use in moments like this and uh, if people actually knew what was going through those minds through this mind and the idle times that you actually tweet uh, yeah, let's just let's leave it at that. The influences from a basketball standpoint, you can really tell. And, and let's talk about the X's and O's a little bit. I think the biggest thing in the teams and games that I've seen uh, your teams play, I've seen you a couple of times uh, throughout the course of the last couple of years, you value the basketball on both sides of the floor. From a possession standpoint, offensively, low in turnovers, high in shooting percentage, and points per possession. And that's also dictated by what you do on the defensive side. Talk about your philosophy on both ends of the floor. Well, one, one does influence the other. Uh, for example, example, if you can make plays defensively and get out into the open court, you're going to have higher possession games. If you're going to, uh, you know, if you're going to take care of the basketball and not allow transition buckets off, steals, blocks, turnovers, again, you're, you're playing a specific type of game. I've gone to the tournament with a team that was in the top third in possessions per game and the bottom third in possessions per game. We'll play how we have to play to win. Every coach will just say, yeah, we're going to play up-tempo. Everybody says that, and then at the end of the year, playing however it is they can win. That, that's what it comes down to. I know this, rather than worry about, rather than worry about tempo, possessions, the, the passion which you play with, mm -hmm. that's more important. The, the amount you let your body fly around, uh, that's what people want to see. And yeah, there's hopefully a lot of dunks in the process, but uh, you know, I, I want to see our guys play with a joy, a passion. And there's that gelling there that you talk about when North Dakota State had been working so well over the past few years, most certainly. They were all working very well together, but that starts from practice. That starts from that gel. Talk about how you get your players to buy in. I would assume they buy in from the start with your personality, and then you build on that from practice. Well, you, you got to, it's repetition. Yeah. That's how you buy in. I mean, it, there's no debating after a while if something starts to work because they're doing it over and over again if it's going to work or not. And it's, it's shown on videotape. You know, I, I'm a big believer in, in teaching through watching tape. I think that's very important. And uh, because there's no arguing. That is either right or that's wrong. It's mm -hmm. quantifiable. It's black or white. Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to ask them to do all kinds of wacky things. I'm trying to ask them to do what deep down they know is right. And, uh, you know, you can get people arguing with you here or there uh, at a moment. But, again, you just keep wearing them down, teaching Teaching, teaching. I'm not, believe it or not, people don't probably don't believe this, but I'm, I'm not a screamer, I'm not a yeller. I'm gonna teach. I get out and practice, I'm gonna teach. You know what, we can do this better, this is how we can do it better. And you'd be amazed. I mean, people, I get it all, oh, kids are changing so much. No, they're not, they wanna win. Right. They wanna win. And if we can all agree on that, then we'll go the same direction. There's no reason for me and you to bicker at each other for us to go the same direction. Let's just move, let's go forward. Scheduling and recruiting probably fall under the same philosophy then. Right fit, you talked about it in your press conference about the type of player that you would like, but also the type of schedule that you'd like. Right fit is big with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and with recruits in particular, uh, you, you can have all kinds of kids out there that are talented. Only a select few are going to fit into what you do. We, we spend a lot of time with that in the recruiting process. As far as scheduling goes, yes, that mirrors, mirrors the type of team you have. Uh, I thought we had a really good team at the school I was at last year, and we scheduled accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, there are going to be years where you got a younger squad, we'll schedule accordingly. We got games to get yet, and I'm still trying to learn our team a little bit. So, mm -hmm. haven't finalized that. Uh, I was talking to some people around the office, they were nervous about not being done with the schedule yet. I said, I. Tell me the last team that didn't finish a schedule. It's going to finish. Whether or not it's the schedule we want, I don't know yet, but it'll definitely finish. 
the question was asked during the press conference, uh, how are you on scheduling? And you said that you're for it. Yeah, I am for it. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is going to be a schedule. It, yes. We talk about longevity a lot. And to wrap it up, so many people ask any position within any athletic department, well, how long are you going to stay? How long are you going to be the voice of the Bobcats? And uh, my basketball season with you is going to be my seventh here, and I'm looking forward to that. You're talking about long, long term. Salary and winning are two big reasons why there can be that long term. But all the other things, what are the building blocks to allow you to be successful long term here at Ohio? Just a, a bunch of guys that want to be together, that want to be here. You know, and if you, if you want to have the way we do it, if you want to have success, you've got to have continuity. Guys have got to stay. If, if I invest two years into a kid and he decides to go, that, that, that's setting you back right mm -hmm. to ground zero. Mm -hmm. Just And here's the beauty of it, and that's why this school is so appealing to me. Our guys that are here like this campus, like mm -hmm. being here. If you can't understand why, we can walk outside right now and you can see why. It's beautiful here. Yeah. This is college. This is, this is what college should be. It looks like it's from a movie. Okay? Quintessentially collegiate. It, it, that is a great way of putting it. <laughs> uh, I'm going to steal that. You can. Thank you. Yeah. It'll make you happy if I steal it and use it correctly because then you can cover better basketball. Then games. you could cut me a check. It, Absolutely. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, the first interview is done, and I thought we set the, the, uh, the ground floor very well here. I thought we did. I thought we set the bar extremely low, and now all we can do is get better. Just get better. Yep. Get better every day. Saul Phillips, thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Thank you. That's coverage of Ohio men's basketball on Bobcat TV. We welcome Saul Phillips to Athens.